Okay, what's up everybody? It's brand new you here and you see I'm using Ubuntu Linux uh, OS this uh, pretty much you know Windows or Mac this is the other thing if you never heard of Ubuntu well it's it's kind of like uh, Windows and Mac mixed together I think I, I don't know it's my opinion but I think it kind of looks like Windows 10 uh, on, on their little uh, home screen here or whatever you call it show applications so you got all your apps here um, and then I put some of my favorites here on a little sidebar and if I go to files uh, as you can see here it reminds me of Mac uh, I've seen people with Mac computers before so and I've used some when I was at Texas Bible Institute and Young Believers Broadcast. So uh, that was, you know, a neat experience because that was like my first time playing around with Mac. And so I was using some of their software like Final Cut and Photoshop and stuff like that. But anyways, uh, I got my pictures here. So I created this one right here. Um, I'm trying to think of what I used. I I might have used uh, either GIMP or Krita. I think I used GIMP for that one. Okay, so music. I got um, some audio I created in Audacity. It says first recorded audio in Audacity on Ubuntu. So basically, I downloaded all these uh, apps or software um, and tested them out and this is on a Windows XP computer I partitioned the the hard drive and split it in half so half of the computer is a Windows XP professional and half the computer is an Ubuntu so I'm able to save files I figured it out how to put um, I can find folders and files within the old or within the uh, Windows XP so anything that's in um, that computer I can find through the system and I can go to documents my pictures and or I can go to here my music I got deuce tray that boy presents prayed up left out uh, mixtape from datpiff.com which I got a link to if you go to hotrapmix.com my website but uh, basically I found out that I could actually put files onto the Windows XP without having to turn off this computer or using a thumb drive so before you waste time trying to go back and forth and reset your computer turn it on and off you can save yourself some time and, and I'll explain the reason why you'd want to do this uh, in the first place why you'd want to transfer back and forth maybe there's program preferences like for example I got Windows Movie Maker and maybe I prefer that as my video editor versus something like that I got in this computer here. So if I make a video file or got a bunch of pictures that I created or audio and I want to put it together in Windows Movie Maker versus uh, what they got here in this computer, you know, then all I have to do is uh, go to, say, my documents or my music and what I did here was I copy to and then I click other locations uh, and I go to system and then I go to uh, documents and settings all users and I go to um, documents again music and select and since I don't want to really do that, I don't know if there's a way to actually cancel that. So I'm going to can Oh, there's a cancel button up there. You see, I'm learning right now. I just basically started learning this uh, system today. And so what's amazing to me is the thought that I can use Windows XP to create a click and play game. This is the reason why I got this XP because I really wanted to play around with Chris Cisco's, uh Monkey Island fan game 
that I played a long time ago. I went to boxofmystery.com. That's where you can download the games that I'm about to mention. Uh, so, Monkey Island 2 LeChuck's Revenge, based on Mission Impossible and a bunch of other parodies of and references to movies. You can turn on factoid mode and get a behind the scenes uh, uh, references or, or just uh, behind the scenes facts about the creation of the game and other things that are referenced and parodied the music used uh the funny thing is he used wave and midi in fact uh let, let's see if i actually i do got it on here i believe i can access it which it's on the uh, windows xp but since i've discovered this amazing capability of being able to go back and forth between computers i can most likely uh, open up the pdf file um let's see where's it at hopefully I can find it um, I don't want to waste too much time on that but uh, there, there's supposed to be a PDF file that I saved that has it's basically a website I stumbled upon that has the whole like uh, how to use click and play which you know you can figure out yourself you can reverse engineer you know any one of the games that Chris made that you download his games you uh, extract the zip files and then you install them and then for me I had to control alt delete and to end the uh, installation once it was finished because it wouldn't close out but other than that the program runs smoothly his games install into the Microsoft games thing and then you know you just kind of have to do a little bit of uh, figuring things out you go to a click and play uh, search on Google and, and uh, find click and play for schools and download that and you can open up all of Chris's games I would save them as a new file and not over the original so that you can create your own template and basically uh, I can't really show you what I'm talking about right now because it's on Windows XP but you know what's cool about that and I'll probably make other videos to show y'all what click and play and his Monkey Island fan games look like. Uh, maybe a, uh, a review. But, you know, y'all can't really see it right now. But what I'm talking about is if I want to create my own click and play game, I could create my own sound with Audacity. I can make my own beats with LMMS. And I can make my own artwork with all the apps that Linux gives me. Uh, which they have more than this. But, you know, this is two of my favorites right here and you know so if I don't want to be stuck with just paint on Windows XP and ArcSoft Photo Studio which I downloaded a trial version of uh, which Chris himself used um, then you know I have all these options and I can create all that within this w without having to go back and forth between different computers and having to use a thumb drive and Go back and forth, back and forth. You know, I kind of have to do go back and forth between turning off Windows, this machine, and unless I, I haven't really figured out if you can just make a switch between these two operating systems without turning off the computer yet. Um, I did make it to where they are, uh, they run dual, uh, that side by side. So I don't know if I can switch between both, uh, like like that yet I haven't played around to, to figure that out but from the boot menu you can choose which OS you want and uh, so from booting up I can go into Windows XP and open stuff that I saved so if I created a mp3 file with audacity or a wave because KNP click and play only opens MIDI and wave files so that's the thing is if I create music it's gonna have to be wave files but you know, Chris used a majority of his music was MIDI files, so you might do a little bit of uh, surfing on Opera, which I found to be the best uh, um, browser for Windows XP. A lot of stuff has been uh, pretty much removed from being supported on Windows XP. They've they pretty much made that uh, an outdated operating system that hardly anybody talks about anymore or uses. Uh, me being one of the few out of all the people in the whole entire world 
Um, I'm sure plenty of people will probably use the emulated versions, compatibility versions, or something like that. Maybe some people still use Windows XP. I could be totally wrong. I think a radio station I saw, some people were actually, the people that do that station, I think were actually using Windows XP, to, to my knowledge, from my memory, could be wrong, but it looked like Windows XP to me, and so... You got options. You got, you know, different things that you could do. And, and for me, wanting to see what I could do as a techie kind of guy and a gamer and an animator and music uh, person, you know, wanting to do different creative things and kind of break the borders and try things and see what works and what doesn't. I've installed Ubuntu here side by side with Windows XP to see what I can open from Windows XP and what I couldn't and so I've downloaded some software and apps for that side and I've downloaded some software and apps for this side so I'm seeing what's going to work and and uh, how I can use them back to back and so it's really fun I'm, I'm enjoying this I know I haven't shown y'all much here on the Ubuntu so I'm about to start I know I'm just I've been talking and dragging on and on but I'm about to show y'all myself here with this little app here I am, here I am, so I like my coffee. That's a song I made. You need to look that up on YouTube. <laughs> I recommend it. You should. You could. You would. Christmas every day. It's almost Christmas. Thanksgiving. I'm enjoying this. I haven't played around with this, so I don't know what I'm going to do here. Oh, wow. This is pretty cool. So if I create effects like this, I could save the video file and put it into Windows Movie Maker on XP. And that's another cool thing is Windows XP, I mean, uh, Windows Movie Maker is no longer supported as an app, period. They they don't even have that on Windows 10. Like, come on, y'all. That, that is crazy. Like, I know technology is getting further ahead of the line but like stuff that's not being supported anymore it still exists the technology still exists in fact computers and are more and more becoming compatible with each other like uh you know my iphone is compatible with my windows and stuff like that being able to transfer videos and pictures and music and stuff back to back you know so I don't see why they would discontinue Windows Movie Maker. I don't know what they were thinking. In fact, somebody else the other day, I brought up the idea of, or, or the, told them that I was playing around with Windows XP, and they said they hadn't heard that, of that, anybody talk about that for a long time. So, uh, you know, I guess I am truly one of the few. And so he's a computer guy. He, he said he actually liked windows xp a lot better than a lot of the new stuff because it's feature rich and it drags and you know it's just kind of slower so like windows xp he said was like his favorite os it, it just you know they you know they uh they've come out with several different other operating systems since then and discontinued all the past ones they don't just keep supporting or creating and upgrading all the other stuff alongside they just got to be like the, all the game systems you know okay well the newer is better well the newer ain't always better in fact it should always be experimental in my opinion like shouldn't ever delete a former existing technology we should always improvise like they still create record players today so they've improvised the one i got which i'm looking at right now and i'll let y'all see it it's got a um a, a jack on it you know i can play these in fact right now i could uh plug that right here into my computer and in fact maybe i should show y'all just to show y'all for old times sake you know you can bring new and old technologies together and this right here these records are so old but i can still access them uh, you know, I, I do need a, a printer cable. 
I'm going to be able to do this without unplugging my stuff here. Uh, but I do want to show you all that old school stuff wouldn't have something like this. But they improvised something that was old. And they didn't just delete the technology. They didn't say, oh, forget these. And just like, you know, you can't play record players anymore because we're new and updated and stuff like that. No, now you can restore and save old records and put them on the computer with this thing right here so i think in the same way windows xp could be saved preserved and updated but unfortunately people who make a business with that kind of stuff you know they they because they want to make money and they want everybody to be sold on the newest greatest thing they've got to make it almost impossible for you to you know, um, be able to use your old systems because, you know, if they discontinue support, then you're discouraged from using that stuff. You got to be a smart guy like me who knows how to work around things. And, and unfortunately, sometimes they want to cut even the smart people out and be like, okay, well, you're, you're breaking the rules, buddy. You're, you, you, we don't want you using that old system. So we're going to just cut everything and make it even harder for you. So I, I don't know. I, I I hope they don't get to that, that point. I hope they'll be a little nicer and be like open minded and see that some of these technologies you know, can be good for us, you know, to, to be able to, to preserve and, and keep the legacy and things like that because some of these OSs these newer OSs could could OSs could learn a thing or two from. Like, um or at least the people who developed them could learn a thing or two from the old stuff because the new stuff kind of buggy, you know. So I think you know we should preserve old technology, and uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show y'all me preserving the legacy right here, right now. But maybe I should because I can make this video hour long if I want to. Uh, I'm just trying to get to the point and show y'all some of my other stuff. I, I want to show y'all Krita before I end the video. Um, I've already explained the whole click and play thing. I'm trying to keep my mind on topic of what I wanted to make this video stuff about. Shout out to Jacob Hudson River, the same name. Uh, he, he does music too. Uh, he, he knew my friends Cairo Studios, the band that also I want to shout out. Um, anyways, uh, Oh, I got a printer cable right here. It's real small though. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to, to use it without unplugging something valuable back there. What do I got plugged up? I'm trying to figure out what I have plugged in back here. Um, okay, so I got the Wacom. I can easily put that back in. Um, So, I'm going to show you all what I'm doing here. Uh, anyway, so, what I'm doing is unplug this CD. As you see, I'm going to plug it in. I don't want to mess it in here. I'm going to move this out of the way. And I'm going to have to put this in here. So I'll put that in. Um, I know this is kind of ghetto. I don't know what I'm doing. But I just want to show it to you. So that's that. So I got a vinyl record player. This right here. Okay, one, one thing I like about this is it's got uh, what was wrong with this system? Um, this record right here has a instrumental. Yeah, if you want to make a remix, you can do this. So what I'm going to do is take a record out. Sorry guys, if it doesn't look like I'm being nice to my record here, but. Uh, Alright, so I don't know why it can 
continue to play while I talk to you and show you all what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going all nerd mode right now. I'm going to take a sip of coffee because my, my uh, mouth is drying up. So what I'm going to do now is this. sort of. Alright, that looks kind of weird, but whatever. Okay, there it fits. I'm going to go to Audacity here. And I might go to uh, LMMS to show you all how I can remix this. So, that's that audio I recorded earlier. And error, open device. Oh, is this, yeah, it's still plugged in. Um, so, with that recording right now, the uh, video screen recorder, I don't know for sure if it's going to uh, let me run this at the same time. Like, because it's both audio and it's using a sound driver, I don't know if the sound driver is going to let me record audio or play it back, I mean, at the same time as recording to, uh, you know, my video capture. So I, I'm not sure if there's any interference or not. So what I'm going to try to do is uh, figure out where this, um, I'm not sure yet. I haven't played around with this, so I'm trying to find a stereo recording. sure if that's the right thing. Okay, so that was recording, uh, that was recording my mic on the computer. I'm trying to figure out what exactly I used to, uh, record the record player. A lot of, uh, options here. And it's not the same as Windows where I can figure out where to line in and, I mean, the, uh, that, uh, mix. Maybe this, let, let's see if this will work. Pulse mix. Okay. Recording, record. Hey! Recording, record. Hey! Um. System default. Hey, 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 on a Windows computer, I would use Stereo Mix. I'm trying to figure out which microphone input here is Stereo Mix. A little bit different messing around with this 
obviously I have lots of options here. Windows, you only have like a few options, but it looks like Linux literally like makes multiple things of each thing. So like you literally have to figure this stuff out and play around with it. Um, it's just, what happened there but let me try uh, that okay uh, yeah okay if I'm going to be able to demonstrate it or not. It's, it's kind of like a... Uh, a little difficult here. Is this video? figure that y'all but I can't right now I guess uh, I'll, I'll come back I'll do a follow-up video if, I, if anybody wants to see how I do this I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about uh, I'm just gonna let y'all know it is possible to to uh, sample uh, make samples here so I'm gonna pretend here that I uh, I'm, I'm gonna just pretend I'm going to pretend that I recorded something from uh, my record player into here. If it, if the thing will, you know, speed up a little bit. Uh, let me get more coffee. My mouth is being dry a little bit. So it got slow for some reason. I'm just gonna close it. Okay, never mind. Uh, wait. Okay. Let's see. If if it keeps being slow, I'm just gonna move on to the next example of my software here. Uh, and I could do follow-up videos for y'all to see. Yeah, it, it's giving me problems, so I, I'll just wait for later. I just wanted to show y'all that I got a new OS and I'm playing with Ubuntu now and running it, running it alongside Windows XP. So, uh, so yeah, I, I make beats with LMMS and I can play with Krita. I'm gonna, I guess I'll just go ahead and uh, take that uh, song out. So, I, I got this uh, record for $2 at a uh, antique store. Okay. So, 
Still got these here. Nope. I'll show y'all. I have. Okay, let me see if my. Uh, what happened here? I've got to open up my uh, camera again. Cheese. Cheese is the name of the app. Uh, and I can rap. Uh, and there I am. Yeah. Got my Wacom here. And, uh, I'm gonna plug that in. See what's what's be. record player and I'll show y'all my use of Krita. Okay, so create a new new file. Just like using Photoshop in a way or or whatever. It's it's a paint program. So go to black here. Test with the mouse. Go to undo. And I'll show y'all. I'm gonna kind of split this up so y'all can see both me and the um, program, and y'all can see that how I'm doing this. So So yeah, as you can see, it's mainly just you uh, freehanding it, and you gotta have some hand-eye coordination to kind of master this. So if you can see and uh, feel with your hands, or you know, with your mind on the screen and stuff, hand-eye coordination, then uh, then. A tablet like this is for you, but if you're wanting one with a screen or you're actually drawing on the screen, those are, are way more expensive. Uh, you can see some people use them if you want to check that out. Draw with Jazza is a YouTube channel where he does that kind of thing. Um, and uh, yeah, some other people I recommend on YouTube are Roberto Blake and other content creators. Um, uh, Blimey Cow and uh, Sega Night Kevin, they they uh, get together on the Inner Tube podcast, and you can hear them talking about content creation. So, so check out their podcasts. I got a podcast too. Go to hotrackmix.com, and you'll be able to hear mine. Um, look up Brand New U B R A N N U Y U, and you should find me. But. Uh, Hopefully y'all enjoyed me showing y'all around on here. Uh, you can definitely do some cool stuff with uh, LMMS or with um, any one of these uh, little softwares here. Um, you're capable of making beats and all kinds of stuff. And as you can see, I got my studio monitors here. So I got studio monitors, and I got two record audio recording devices. I'm using this one right now, but I got, you know, so I got the Personas audio box, and I got the Focusrite. And so I'm a tech gear kind of guy. I, I got a PS2 and a, a VHS player hooked up to this little thingy, and I use a little converter there and play it into my TV screen here. So. That's cool. This is a TV slash computer, which I'm using a Windows XP uh, and Ubuntu on there. And I got that hooked up to a little converter there using HDMI. And that's how Ooh. I plugged in there. And so, uh, so it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm crossing technology from past 
to uh, present you know um, and what else is it's pretty amazing there we go so I'm using I wish I could show you all the uh, um, camera I'm using maybe I could show you all through this I'm gonna use my um, camera and put it on selfie So nice. That's the camera I'm using. That's a Logitech. So, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm crossing the technologies. And if I was using another version of a computer right now, even here on Ubuntu, for some reason, I'm not able to run OBS. I'm going to have to look into that. But with OBS, I could use that broadcasting software to basically record and save my VHSs. I was talking about saving records and stuff and remixing them. You can do the same thing with old VHS tapes. So it's, it's amazing. You, there's so much stuff you could do with even CDs and DVDs and stuff. You can use that handbrake software to, to uh, get DVDs and stuff on a computer and, and so uh, it, it's so cool how a lot of technology is is uh, you know can be preserved and put into your computer into mp3 format or video format mp4 or something so uh, yeah anyways uh, I hope you all enjoyed this video um, as you can see I'm using an old machine but it looks new here on this screen. I mean, look at the the quality of the uh, the video here. It's it's a, a nice little computer that I've modernized, and uh, I can use uh, different software. In fact, what I'm using to screen record right now is Kazam, um, and I haven't tried that pixel software yet but I'm sure it's nice let's try that real quick before I end the video but before I end the video I'll just ask y'all like share subscribe leave a comment what y'all think about all this the technologies I'm using mixing and mashing and so has have y'all seen anything like this before is are y'all new to this did I show y'all something new that I taught y'all for the first time or is it kind of teaching y'all something that y'all might have already heard about but y'all are seeing a new perspective on it or whatever you know let me know what you're learning here and if y'all want to to recommend something as well like or give me ideas for content y'all recommend something that that y'all are learning from or have suggestions based on what y'all are seeing me do that y'all point me in a direction that to mess around with some stuff and learn some things uh yeah leave some videos or or uh comments or whatever you know some some links or or something to some blogs or videos or something to to learn from you know if you're a techie or a gamer retro gamer or even modern games i i, I you know, I like to learn about new stuff, so let me know what y'all are learning out there. Anyways, uh, I'm going to play around with this real quick. Oh, cool. I can make pixels. I can make my pixel art here. That's so cool. Um, let's see. So it's saying you can do layers with this. That's, that's the other cool thing about this is layers. Different layers on top of each other. I like it. So I got the main layer, and I can create another layer, and I can draw uh, on top of it and change the opacity. That's pretty cool. That that's for uh, you know new school, old school graphics. If I 
brought this to click and play you know save it to the system on here and bring it over to click and play um, so I want to see if there's any game makers on Linux that I could use that are like click and play I know there's game maker and there's other things I'm sure there's something I could put on the you know Ubuntu Linux OS here that would be an alternative to TNT but of course I do want to play around with TNT just for old time's sake and maybe I'll release a game for anybody that's still using Windows XP or has access to compatibil compatibility mode and somehow can open my game up. It would be almost like those underground mixtapes. If you can get to it, have at it and play it and have fun. If you can't, well, keep trying and uh, keep searching. But uh, anyways... Uh, this kind of stuff is fun for me it, it's definitely like um, it, 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 it feels good to be kind of underground you know the mainstream everybody's all doing the same thing as each other I'm kind of trying to think outside the box and do something different from other people so like uh, this is pretty cool for me it's fun just to experiment and play around until I find something else to do, you know. So, let's see, you can save it or you can export it. Um, so, this just saves it into something that I can, like, open it up with this program again. So, if I want to save it into the conventional or the general uh, formats that a lot of people know about, like PNG, Whatever you want, and, and uh, I know a guy that can explain TNGs pretty well for you. Vekel V E K L uh, on YouTube. He has twelve the series. You go to his channel, and he has a playlist for his animated series and a behind the scenes video. And somewhere in that video, he talks about portable network graphics TNG files and being able to use the transparency and all that stuff. You know, he uses After Effects and different software to, to create his animation. So he breaks it down what he does, his way of doing things. So I encourage y'all to check him out. Uh, there's another guy called Devin Burrows. Um, he's got HBS Anime. Look up Christian Anime and his stuff will probably pop up somewhere in the results on the first of the search. But uh, Devin Burrows is a guy that been in school for animation and art and he's I think one of the art institutes and he also uh, he's working on a game called spiritual warfare right now and he's made some beats in fact he, he claimed to make the beat for Lecrae called don't waste your life uh, it's a song y'all could search that up Lecrae L-E-C-R-A-E and then it's Don't Waste Your Life. I don't know if you can type D-W... Uh, don't Waste Your... Uh, Y-L? Yeah. Don't Waste Your Life. Yeah. So you can maybe abbreviate it and it might come up. Um, but yeah. Devin claims to have him and his brother gave a beat to Lecrae at one of his concerts. And he ended up using it. And so... That's an interesting behind the scenes thing because I, it's crazy how I find this guy just, and then he so happens to be the creator of a beat that Lecrae might not even know who this guy is, but he claims to have produced it and, you know, he, he makes uh, animations as well. You know, he makes games. That's awesome. I hope he does more stuff that Lecrae uses and I hope Lecrae can promote the homie that you know, um, claims to have made the beat. And, and, I, and I think he, he's telling the truth because he's a Christian. So, you know, uh, I say claim because, I mean, Lecrae hasn't shouted him out or anything. But, you know, why would he if he got the beat randomly from some guy that handed it to him at a concert? And, you know, Gavi kind of was discovered the same way. Lecrae was actually trying to, to find uh, out which producer this was. And, Gavi kind of uh, slapped himself in the head, not literally, but just kind of disappointed or like, what? 
why the heck did I not think of that before? Like when Lecrae told him, yeah, I've been searching all over for you, but you didn't have any contact information for me on the, the, the mix you gave me. So, like, you know, Gavi explained that in his testimony. Uh, you can look up Gavi testimony on YouTube and you might be able to find that and hear it from Gavi himself talking about how Lecrae and Reach Records discovered him and how he's now like their producer. He's the one that's making like most of the beats that you're hearing. So, uh, so yeah, just comparing his story to Devin, I hope maybe one day Devin can do stuff for reach records like more than just that one song and that they can actually maybe work hand in hand on animation and games and stuff like i know that they're doing animations having this one guy ignatic ignatic e he created a lot of pixel art like uh animations and stuff for uh andy minio and social club you know social club misfits and it's interesting because they they uh, have some pretty cool game looking videos and another reason why I want to do videos like this is so more people can do this kind of stuff like the kind of stuff Ignatic E is doing but they can make actual games like because I know some of these people know how to animate but they don't know how to make games and so maybe it's because they don't know how to program but like I want to show them that there's like stuff that's easy and point and click and DIY or whatever you know do it yourself like creators that I've spent years searching and trying and playing around with stuff I haven't really made a whole lot to show for it but I've experimented and found many ways to do different things so like uh, I've got several books as you can see on my shelf if I turn this camera back on um, is there any other uh, is there any other file formats out there before I <laughs> before I just close out of this um, okay so you got different options here you, you got BMP JPEG so BMP let's see because I know on click and play for sure that the BMP has to be like 256 graphics or it's going to give you an error. Uh, that's just a note for anybody that's wanting to get into this click and play stuff. Because I know it's old school software and a lot of people probably don't want to play with something that's outdated. But hey, I can still play Chris Jusco's games. I can go to his website, boxofmystery.com, download them and as long as I got a Windows XP I'm good, right? So anybody with a Windows XP can still use click and play and still play Chris's games. You know, he's got new updated stuff for newer systems if you're interested in checking out his other games. But, uh, you know, I, I just want to say that, that you can, uh, if you don't want an error, if you are getting into click and play, one thing I did and learned is I uh, would, uh, if I was using an, a nice program for creating graphics, I would make sure I copied and pasted it into Microsoft Paint, and then I made sure I saved it as a 256 uh, graphic thing, and it, it takes away some of the color quality, but it makes it where you can select all and or select whatever portion of the picture you want and copy it and paste it directly into um, your uh, graphics that or, or whatever that you're you're creating for click and play whenever you're creating an app active object and you're trying to uh, make an animation or whatever or a static image of some kind then you can edit and paste or whatever the uh, image that you uh, you know created elsewhere but in order to do it, it needs to be 256 or whatever, um, or else you you might be booted out of the program and it'll give you an error and, and close your click and play. And so, to save y'all some frustration, I want to tell y'all that right now. Um, I don't know why it's acting slow on me right now. I guess it's just because it's got two gigabytes of. Um, 
RAM and you know just in general what I'm clicking on is probably kind of uh, slow or whatever when when uh, uh, you know sometimes certain kinds of buttons are probably slow because of the GUI the graphical user interface you know the more feature rich things are you know the more like I guess RAM they use or something like that so it's got to process your clicks and all that kind of stuff so I'm having a hard time here I'm just gonna close it Whoa. and you use um, control alt delete didn't want to do that hmm oh I think I got it cancel close don't save okay and I'm trying to think of what I was going to do since I just closed it um, oh I was going to show you all my books so before I end the video I want y'all to see I got a lot of like books I got like you know gaming books how to create games how to use flick flash how to use Photoshop how to you know use DirectX blender you know a lot of different things and I got animation and drawing manga and graffiti and superheroes and screenwriting and the animation Bible and a lot of different things up there and I got my instruments and things and decorations so I could give y'all a room tour in a different video got some of my art supply stuff over there and got lots of my movies and stuff and a lot of my collection I'm giving away so they're on the other end of the room in uh, trash bags uh, or actually I'm planning to sell them not just give them away I might give away some movies to other people um, But yeah, y'all can see how nerdy or geeky I am with my room here and what I'm doing here with this computer and the software. Uh, hopefully y'all have learned a bit from this and I thank y'all for watching. Like I said, you can like, share, and subscribe. Help me get more viewers. Help me to get it, this information out to other people out there that could use some help doing some cool, fun technical things making music games art animation anyone that could use this kind of thing if you know somebody that's into that kind of thing or into gadgets and geeky stuff and apps and programming or whatever get them onto this video like share subscribe you can comment and let me know what you think um, pressing the bell icon when you do subscribe so you can keep watching as each video comes out um, you'll be able to to uh, see all my new uh, videos as they come out so anyways I thank y'all for helping me and um, thank y'all for watching and, and stay tuned for the next video um, anyways so I'm about to end the screen recording